Dan Hurley, UConn men's basketball coach, reigning two-time champions. Join us here on the Iowa College Basketball Podcast. you giving us some time. We're at the tail end of media day here. You've actually had a whirlwind. Um, we're going to talk about your team, but apparently you got starstruck this morning. Good morning, America. You might have seen Tom Holland, but you didn't meet him. So you, that, that's how your day got rolling here? Yeah, so uh, I got to see Spider-Man. Yeah. He walked by. Um, He's one of your idols, right? Well, yeah, I mean, I these are my underwear. I have a Spider-Man. Yeah. I have some Spider-Man underwear. So, so uh, do I, by the way. This, this is God's on, I'm not kidding. <laughs> this is God's honest truth. Or I'm really getting into it in a way I didn't expect on this interview, but yes. I don't wear them for games. I wear them more for fun. You know, just yeah, like I'm fun. A, yeah. Like underoos. Uh, sure. He's, he had a, I, the, Brit, the British accent. Yeah, I hear that you did not know off. that. Did you not did not know, know that. that Tom Holland is British. I did not know That's that. That's a very Dan Hurley thing, though. I, I respect it. There's a cluelessness to things of that nature. <laughs> And then uh, Robin Roberts, Mike Strahan. Yeah. Um, obviously, the makeup has worn off. But, um, yeah, it was. Uh, it's made this a little bit easier now. It's not as intimidating. Oh, Robin you must Roberts be thrilled. I know. Matt. Come on. This is, yeah, I mean, come on Matt. off a cliff. Yeah, I know. It's not, <laughs> it's not even close there. Uh, let's, just, let's just get this out of the way to start, okay? Mm -hmm. Last year, I ranked you 13th in the preseason. I was wrong. I think this is now the... Tenth time I've said this on record or privately to you that I was wrong. Mm -hmm. I have ranked you fourth heading into the season. To yeah. me, that's a very fair ranking. You bring back one starter from a two-time champion, giving you and your staff credit for your culture that you've built. The guy, the teams that I have in in your company, the Alabamas, Kansas, Houston, bring a lot of key pieces back on some very successful teams. Give me you can you can call me out if maybe right yeah. here, but I didn't I didn't want to run from the obvious as we. Why don't get we going just here. talk talk it through? Maybe it would All be right. better. So we okay. The year before, we only returned two starters, and effectively. But there were more. There were more pieces that and were. Effectively, impact. though, we we lost our. We had Donovan. We did bring off the bench, who was a game changer. Yes. But we did lose Naheem and Joey California. Yeah. Who were, they were two of our top eight, and our bench was critical. So we lost three starters, and two of our first three off the bench, and that was our whole rotation. So, technically, we lost five critical players three of which were starters and we came back and were even better and more you dominant. were better yes more dominant yeah so i get what you're saying it's four starters we've lost four which, amazing players so and not Haw to say that hawkins you, andre jackson Adonis they were Sonogo also amazing were but amazing but players. but your team last year was even better so to to do this again and to to make a push for this three beat to me dan i think it I frankly don't. I can't envision another scenario in college basketball where there would be a school and a staff, rightfully so, given as much credit as you guys coming in, because this hasn't been done since Wooden. Yeah. And you took on this task. You turned down the Lakers job. Do you feel right now, as we are on the precipice of the season starting, do you have the same feeling? Maybe you had two different feelings entirely for the past two preseasons. But what is your feeling right now with this group versus what the you know previous rosters that you had? Yeah, I, I listen. It's. Um... It's a lot. I mean, to lose seven NBA guys and, and nine rotation guys and to be banking as heavily as we are on our ability to have players increase the role that they had the year before or to develop like freshmen that in solo ball, Jalen Stewart, Jaden Ross, like to put the amount of expectations that we're going to put on some unproven players. Mm -hmm. Now, Jalen Stewart obviously helped us in the Big East tournament solo ball in one of our biggest non-conference wins of the year in this building versus North Carolina flashed the way Jordan Hawkins did against Auburn the year before when we played that classic game uh, in the Bahamas. So he had a very similar moment to that sophomore year takeoff that Hawkins had. I mean, we're banking on our ability to kind of do the development thing and our culture and continuity is going to carry us a long way and that our tactical offense and uh, just it, it's going to all kick in and we're going to catch that magic. I could see when you look at our roster and you say, well, um, it might not measure up to these other people that just went portal crazy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I see that. But, you know, we did it two years in a row with two completely different teams. I feel like we earned that number one the way a heavywood a heavyweight champ would when they win the belt even if they looked staggered in a fight 
but they retain the belt. You don't take the belt from them. Mm -hmm. You let them keep the belt until they prove that they're not the champs anymore. Okay, that's that's valid, and I hear you the whole way. I do. Uh, I will say this. Feel free to reject this uh, assumption if you please. I yeah. think Hassan Diara's capability and what you're going to task him with, I think that's maybe the most underrated aspect about your team and why you're obviously the unanimous pick to win this league. Um, are you seeing that in practice? I mean, what, what should people, we, a lot of people know about Caravan yeah. and there's curious about curiosity about Samson Johnson and Terrace Reed now that, but to me, Diara and yeah. what he's tasked with, what have you seen and, and what kind of player are, are we looking to break out here? Yeah. I mean, for Hassan or for, you know, Aiden Mahaney, I think, you know, right now you, uh, we feel like uh, there's a lot of clarity, you know, okay. with, with what solo ball looks like right now. And I think there's, there's a lot of clarity with what Liam McNeely is going to look like and, and Caravan and, and, uh, and Samson Johnson in terms of who's going to start for us. Uh, yeah, but right now, I'm not sure who that fifth guy is going to be. And, and uh, you know, whether it's Mahaney or, uh, or whether it's Hassan Diara, kind of the way okay. that we function on offense. Uh, we don't necessarily need a prototypical point guard. Um, because of the way that we play offense, we just need somebody that could kind of get us into our actions and get us moving around. So, um, you yeah, what do I need from uh, a San Diara? I need a, I, I need a, a UConn guy. I need somebody that, you know, is like uh, running our offense and 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 leading, you know, verbally and and flying around the court, anchoring our defense and giving incredible efforts and not thinking that. Um, you know, it, give me the ball. It's my time to shine. But somebody that's running our system uh, almost the way you would as a college football quarterback that I need a system player at that position that can run our offense. I want to ask you a big picture question. I remember when we talked when you were at Rhode Island and I wrote a profile on you and where you were at that point in your career. And you used a phrase with me when you were reflecting on some previous years when you were uh unstable, I guess, emotionally. And you said, my table was turned over. I called Billy Donovan. My table was totally turned over. Now you're on top of the basketball world. You were courted by the Lakers. Um, you have made yourself available to as much media as I could possibly imagine. I'm wondering how you are keeping your table upright and how you are also keeping yourself grounded in this sense. Because basically, like, the world is your oyster. What you're doing works. Yeah. But avoiding the trap that could come with Whatever I do, there's there's no way I'm going to be wrong with anything. Who, how are you keeping yourself grounded, and, and who's doing that? Aside from the obvious answer being your wife. Yeah, I think my wife and family. Obviously, um, I just I'm either recruiting or getting ready for practice or doing basketball stuff to then you adapt, evolve, improve, right? Team building stuff. Like I'm just either like I'm working or I'm I'm, I'm with the people that are going to keep me in a good place. Or I'm doing things to promote UConn or college basketball or or the success that we've had. Um, I, I think right now college basketball, it struggles to get attention outside of March Madness. It's such an incredible sport. It's an incredible sport to watch in person. Um, you know, the regular season games matter because it's going to impact how people perform in March. And I think I'm just trying to be myself. I'm trying to be authentic. I think, uh, I think in particular, you know, people like me in coaching, people that coach players hard and have high standards and hold people accountable. I think we do so much these days to uh, um, to create such a a soft dynamic in sports and with men in particular that I feel like it's my responsibility to not only love my players and have relationships and have trust, but also like coach them hard, hold them accountable, make them tougher, make them better. Um, you know, I feel like I got a responsibility in, you know, in our sport to be outspoken and to let people know who I am and to draw attention to, uh, to college basketball. I appreciate your time, Dan. Thanks so much. As we get you out of here, I'm just curious. It was a late one. Did you peek in on the Lakers game debut last night? Just to look, yeah, just to look at it. I did in a, in a weird way, like just to see like, Oh, uh, what's going I did, on a here? little bit, okay, like yeah. a little bit, but a little bit, but more so JJ has been running, uh, JJ has been running some good stuff. And, uh, and I, I wanted, to, I had an idea of what his style would look like. Okay. And, uh, you know, it confirmed that he's going to be very successful. I appreciate you, Dan. Good luck. We'll see you soon. UConn Huskies chasing a championship, a third straight season coming up.